Hello, and welcome back. I'm Christy, the voice behind Crafty Christy's Creation Silhouette Studio Tutorials, which is a subset of Crafty Christy's Creations how-to videos. This is the place to find step-by-step -step directions on how to do all the things in Silhouette Studio. Whether you're a beginner or needing a little refresher, this is the place for you. So grab your computer and open Silhouette Studio. It's time to dive into another episode. Welcome back. So if you're anything like me, you've been um, hustling to get a Mother's Day card put together. So I thought this would be a timely um tutorial today. So we are going to go over using the pop-up feature in Silhouette Studio. Uh, it is available in the basic free version, but there are more um, features that you can use if you have Designer's Edition or higher. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a couple things already set up on my screen here. This box over here is going to be my card base which is 5.5 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall. And then I have this blue score line in the middle. And then this one here, this purple one, is going to be my uh, pop-up panel. And it's 5.25 inches wide by 8.25 inches tall. So you'll have a quarter of an inch uh, boundary line when you put this on your other card base and then you can see here I have this green part this one is 5.25 inches wide by 4.125 inches tall and this is basically um, to show me where the center um, of my card will be at the fold line and then I've got a couple of things over here so this cat mandala is what I'm going to be using this small one here is the outline of it. I just traced it with using the trace panel and did an outline. And then I took that outline and then I made a small offset. I'm going to be doing this as a print and cut. So there's going to be a couple extra things that we need to do. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull this offset onto my page here. And then I'm going to open up the card pop-up panel. And then if you click on the part that you want to pop up and then click convert selected shapes to pop up. Sometimes that takes a minute depending on how, um, um, depending on what design you're using. And then you can see we've got all these little pieces here. Let's zoom in. So all of these tabs are going to be your pop up pieces. And you've got, um, and then down here is your base width, which is how wide you want the base of your pop-up to be. I always like to turn that up because I want my base to be nice and sturdy. And as you can see, as I turn that up, it gets larger. And I want just one. So there, 54%. We'll do that. And then your minimum strut width, that's how many of these little pieces you have around the cat. And I don't really care for these tiny little ones. Those aren't going to be very stable. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that up as well. And you can see as you turn that up, you'll get um, thicker, steadier pieces. And I think that'll look good there. And then your dash pitch shows um, how spaced out these dashes are, which are going to be your score lines. I tend to just leave those alone. The next thing you want to do is take this dash line and put it on the center of your card, which will be my green line there. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it down here. And then this part here, this little slider, you can use that if you had multiple pieces. Um, this will either pop that piece out further or less. But I'm since I'm only doing one piece, I'm going to leave that alone. But that is an option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little red circle and I'm going to pull that to the edge of the card. 
So you want this to be on the center of your card because you want your card to be scored to fold in half. And that's why we do that. So I'm bringing those dashed lines all the way out again. So now it's going to score down the center of my card. If you decided you did not want to use this element, you could hit restore to original shape that will get rid of all of the pop-up features, or you can also release pop-up. And then um, if you release your pop-up, you'll be able to edit these lines yourself. Um, that is one of the advantages of having designers edition or higher is that you can um, mess with those pieces yourself. I don't tend to do that um, because it gets a little bit complicated. So I usually just use the pop-up feature and go with it. All right, we have that right where we want it. I'm gonna get rid of my little pop-up feature and I can take my green box and I'm going to delete that. That was just showing us where the center line would be of our card. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so we can see what's going on. So this one is my offset. And I'm going to take my original design and I'm going to put that in my offset. So it's going to cut on that red line. Let's zoom back in. And then all uh, my actual design is just going to be printed. Let's see. I think that looks pretty good. We'll zoom back out. Okay, and then the other thing I did was I went ahead and put together a couple different sayings here. Um, I think I'm going to put this one in here. And happy Mother's Day. And then, so this is my card base. So remember, we're going to fold it in half. So I'm going to put this on the bottom because when I fold it down, that's the part I want you to see. And I'll put that there. Um, I'm going to fill this one in the same color. And I'm actually going to get rid of the cut line because when you go to cut everything, I think uh, when you go to cut everything, I'm going to cut and do everything by line color. So if I get rid of the line color around all of my text, then it won't cut my text. And I have made that mistake before and ended up cutting out all of my text when I didn't want to. Okay. And then let's make sure this one does not have a line color. Let's see, let's see which one we picked there. If I pick the center design, I do not want that to have a line color. Huh, that's interesting. Let's move that over. I don't know why that is having a problem. Let's see if we can change the line color. There, we'll just change that one. I guess I can't really get rid of it. So we'll just make it that purple color so it will match. Put it back in there. Okay, so now when I go to, um, the next thing we're gonna do is add in our registration marks. Come over to the page setup, turn those on. And when I do that, I like to turn on my cut border so that way you know everything needs to be within this line to do your print and cut 
And then, so this one is ready to send. And then once I go ahead and print this one, I will put this one on here and send it as well. And then when you go to the send panel to cut everything out, you want to cut by line color. So I don't want to cut purple and I don't want to cut anything that does not have a line color. And then um, my blue lines are going to be my score lines and my red lines are my cut lines and that way everything is ready to roll. And then I will show you what it looks like once everything is printed and cut out. Okay, we have our two pieces printed and cut out. And so this is my card base. You can see here I've got my score line on there. I'm just gonna fold that down and then I can use my bone folder to really reinforce that fold there. All right, and then our other piece, this is our inside piece. We've got our cut lines, and then we've got our little score lines. So this one's not always easy to manipulate. You wanna bend those score lines so that it's like a step. Just do that a few times. And then this bottom one should bend down. And then you've got your full, your score lines there. So that's what it should do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just fold at those score lines. And try to lay that card flat. And then again, I'm just going to use my bone folder to press all that down. Okay, so then just practice a few times, kind of opening and closing that. That looks pretty good. So you see how this is looks like a step? So it folds in and then it folds down. And then the bottom folds like a V. So it looks like that. Okay, and now all that's left to do is uh, get glue these inside. So you can see there's a little gap around, a quarter inch gap around the entire piece. I'm just gonna use my tape runner. You wanna make sure you don't get any of your pop-up piece taped down then it won't pop up. And I am being extra generous with my tape because I want to make sure that it's going to stay down. And this piece here is a little bit wonky because of the way it cut. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of my, um, of this kind of tape here just because I can get in there and put it down and not worry about getting any tape on my other pieces. So I'm only putting tape on half of my design right now because I want to set this in here and make sure that I've got it in the right place and that those folds are right. And then I'm just gonna press my card down and adhere that top part. Again, I'm gonna use that bone folder to help press everything together. And then I'm gonna add some adhesive to this side and then I'll do the same thing, pressing it down. And you can see this little gap here, that is where the end of my cap folds up. 
So I wanna make sure not to get any glue on that. Okay, and I'll just fold this side down. And then I'm pressing from the fold line and pressing out. That way there's no wrinkles and everything should be straight. All right, so there is our, uh-oh. This guy got stuck. Please ignore my dog. Uh, she is convinced no one is allowed to walk in front of our house. Not even on nice sunny afternoons. Okay, so that piece is pressed down, so let's try that again. And you just wanna test that out to make sure that your recipient doesn't have any issues. And that looks good. So there you have it. That is how to use the pop-up feature in Silhouette Studio. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. If you did, click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future Silhouette Studio tutorials. If you are interested in purchasing the design used in this video, check out the link in the description below. Happy silhouetting! Until next time, with love, Crafty Christie.